Hello, my name is Rick Pearson and this is Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. We have a guest today who's won thousands of people to Christ in America. But just like Prophecy USA, he's questioning from this book, where is this covenant nation heading? Stay tuned as we unlock what's happening in America and why, according to this incredible book that we call the Holy Bible. Welcome back, folks. You know, Jack Hibbs is the senior and founding pastor of Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, based in Southern California. He's the founder and president of Real Life Ministry and a nationally syndicated TV and radio host. Jack and his wife, Lisa, began a home fellowship over 30 years ago with just six faithful souls. Today, that church ministers weekly to over 10,000 people on campus and millions worldwide through daily media outreach programs. In addition, Jack is a frequent conference speaker and a nationally syndicated radio and TV host. His numerous ministries, counting television broadcasts, podcasts, and radio, reach a global audience weekly. Pastor Jack, we've watched your prophecy conferences here in Canada from California, and it's an honor to have you on our program. Welcome to Prophecy USA. Rick, I'm delighted to be with you. I'm just honored, and so I can't wait to get into our conversation together. Well, we've we've watched your uh, your com your conferences uh, with Amir, and we have learned so much of what's happening in the world in prophecy. I want to thank you for your ministry and for what you're doing for the body of Christ. And uh, we're focusing today on your latest book, Countdown. And as I read your book concerning the current state of America, it confirmed many of our insights concerning where we sit on God's prophetic time clock. So what I'd like to do is just read some small excerpts out of your book and then let you expand on those things for our audience. Now, right. the first chapter, the first chapter of the book, describing America, you state this. We are a nation that was founded on biblical principles, but we as a culture have by and large forgotten and rejected that history and turned away from these principles. As a result, we're hanging on the truth of God's word in this nation by a thread. And if we let go, then there's nothing else left. Can you expound on that? Yeah, the correlation that causes that to be a true statement is not my own. The correlation is, if you want to look at how your nation, America, Canada, Mexico, any nation, you can actually chart its course based upon, as an example, Deuteronomy chapter 28. God speaks to the nation of Israel, and he tells them, if you do these things, I will bless you. And he, 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 he by item, by item, he uh, reiterates to them his goodness and what he'll do. But then he also says in the same chapter, Rick, that if you do these things to me, then uh, you leave me no option than to pull my hand of blessing away, and these things will befall you. And he says, this is true of not only Israel first, but of any nation. And so when you look at the founding of America, uh, more specifically the Mayflower Compact, which is technically our true birth certificate, uh, when you look yes. at that, and then you look at the, the direction this nation has gone, uh, in in the last 100 years, last 50 years, in the last five years, there has been a very, very consistent uh, movement to excise God out of the public square. Uh, remove the yes. Ten Commandments, uh, because the Ten Commandments make people feel uncomfortable. Of course they do. If you're thinking about cheating on your wife with your neighbor... That would make you uncomfortable, okay? If you're thinking about murdering somebody, then the Ten Commandments could get in the way of you feeling good about that. But we've removed them from the courtrooms. We've removed them from the classrooms a long time ago. We removed prayer from class. I remember being in school in the mid-60s, and prayer and Bible were in all of our public schools, Rick, here in Southern California, 
And then the next year back in the fall, that was all gone. So Rick, the great thing is this, and it's observable. You can look at it like you can any scientific experiment. America, its policies, its worldview, just systematically drifts further away from God. And the things that the Bible warned about thousands of years ago are now befalling us. Crop failure, civil unrest, uh, the issue of uh, babies, abortion, human sacrifice. Uh, listen to this. It warned that if we rejected God, we would then naturally adopt bad leaders. And so when you look at that, it manifests itself, Rick, mainly because the church has been so very silent. When I say we're hanging on a thread, that's a handful, so to speak, of believers sticking true to the biblical worldview of God's word. And if that were to snap or to go, then there's nothing else standing in the way of what we're seeing, certainly in American politics, but most specifically in California politics, where parents no longer have rights over their children, where children can now sue their parents over the issue of gender. And pulpits refusing to mention words like the gospel, repent, sin, heaven, hell, the authority of the Bible. So we do live in America now in a post-Christian nation, but we're doing everything we can to pray and to shine the light of the gospel and the hope of God. And if there's any hope for America, I believe that the hope is this, that the gospel can be preached yet still over the airwaves and that people can come to Christ. As a politic, as a government, it's quite possible that in those famous words of John Adams, we've crossed the Rubicon. Uh, I think America yes. has gone too far in the realm of politics. There's always hope regarding our souls, but as a nation, I think uh, that, that ship has set sail. Well, uh, Prophecy USA has been teaching Deuteronomy for the last four years, and I would say that we have crossed from Deuteronomy 2815, and we have passed that now, and we're watching the judgments come on the nation. We see that the walls have fallen down, the natural resources are gone, Yep, our enemies are entering the country. These are all uh, I, I would call uh, first signs of possibly a coming judgment that yes. may even supersede our, our natural thinking. But yes. in, um, in chapter two, in fact, you mentioned this, you said uh, God is reaching out, God is calling out, God is crying out, extending salvation and hope. But for this reason, he gives them up in a statement of fact based on our actions. He's responding with judgment. Mm -hmm. So the leaders of our nation, like a bad king in Israel, that king took them down the wrong way and judgment enveloped. Yeah. Do you is this what you're seeing in your in, in how you study prophecy? Absolutely true. And that's the beautiful thing about Bible prophecy. Eschatology, as you and I know well, is that. You know, scholars argue, but it's a beautiful argument, Rick, you know this. Scholars argue that 27 to 33 percent of the entire Bible is eschatological in nature or prophetic in nature. Prophetic. Here's what's cool about yes. that. Over one quarter of the Bible, possibly a third of the Bible, is prophetic in nature. Here's what's fun about that. The prophecies that have been fulfilled in the Bible, they were fulfilled literally which means the prophecies that are going to be fulfilled will be fulfilled literally. So where does that put us literally. right now? We're looking at a time where America, for example, has been one of Israel's most staunch supporters. Not anymore. In 2019, Prophecy USA showcased biblical warnings of the coming New World Order. In 2020, we warned you of their plans to use COVID-19 to accelerate that agenda. In 2021, we warned of the Babylonian spirits who are invading our nation to provoke curses upon the land, emulating Sodom and Gomorrah. But what is next? 
Prophecy USA is proud to present The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future. In this exciting book, you will discover where traditional theologians have missed the mark and why prophecy teachers have refused to acknowledge that America's role in Bible prophecy is rapidly being fulfilled. When you give a donation of $35 or more, you will receive The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future. Or for a donation of just $60 or more, you will receive both books, The Coming Exodus and The Hour That Changes Everything. Call 1-888-306-1759 or visit us online at prophecyusa.org. The, the enemies of America and Canada are not coming. They're already here. And people who are in office, a lot of them should be in jail. We are not appropriating our laws to those yep. people. But, but my question is, who is controlling those people? Because I, I was in business for 32 years. And when you have oil in your background, and you shut it down, and yep. you go buy it from your enemies that are chanting death to America. Who is controlling the leadership? Now, now, you have said uh, you referenced. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna maintain here. I want to just stay yeah. in, in the bounds of America for right now. We're not going to go into the next stage, but you have referenced Revelation 18.4, and that verse is, is one that we have used from day one since we started Prophecy USA three and a half years ago. And that verse says, come out of her, my people, mm -hmm. that ye be not partaker of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Now, how does that apply as we watch this going on? I had a friend of mine who said, I'm so depressed, I can't watch, I can't watch the news anymore. And I said, well, then open up your Bible and read your Bible, because this is proving that, that this book was divinely inspired. And what's happening in our nation is all in this book. When you turn away from God, this is what happens. Yes. So when you say, come out of her, my people, when that verse says, how would a person come out of this? How do you, how do you disconnect this from, from this when you see this, when you see this happening? Do you dive into this book? Mm. Well, listen, absolutely, yes. I, I just want to say to all of your audience, what Rick just said is 100% true. Uh, if you find yourself, if you are remotely worried or concerned about the world around you, We've got the answer for you. It's the Bible. We're not kidding. Dive into the Bible. If you're not familiar with the Bible, start with, the, with John's gospel and just read through the New Testament. And God is going to speak to you from, from the scriptures, but the Bible's the answer. You need peace. You need calm. In fact, the Bible is the answer. And by no means, you know, Rick, we're talking about uh, this, what's part of our pocket power series, the book Countdown. That was the whole point to writing this book, is this book is full of Bible verses to maybe get somebody who's not familiar with the Bible to, to take the Bible seriously. But the point is this, and you hit the nail on the head, that when we reject God, God says, I'm going to remove my hand of blessing from you. You know this. You Exactly. Yeah, you've already mentioned it in Deuteronomy 28. Yeah. He says, I'll remove my hand, and this is what's going to happen. Your crops are going to fail. You're, you're going to have locusts. You're going to have bugs eating your fruit. Your women will miscarry unexplainably. And your enemies will be within your own walls. Rick, in Southern California, it's a bizarre time. Our economy's failing. People are bailing out. California has set a, a, an inter, a, a national record of people leaving the state to survive. But the prices of homes keep going up. Now, you say in your book, persecution is coming. Yep. It's already started. Yes. Your First Amendment rights are already deteriorating. But persecution will not stop Christians from preaching the gospel. And here's something to remember and look for. Persecution always backfires because under the pressure of persecution, salvation sweeps cities. Uh -huh counties, states, 
and even whole nations. So as this, as this darkness starts coming, the light inside of us will get brighter and, and we may even receive a supernatural anointing in the last days to combat this darkness. Yep. Because you don't have to be a rocket scientist. I have customers who never went to church. They're calling me up. And they're saying, what's going on? I mean, even, even people who have never been churched are looking at the news and looking at what's happening in our schools with, with um, the drag queen people yep. and coming in and reading and, and the sexual mutilation. People are going, what in the world exactly. is going on? And I always say, check out what in the word is going on. Yeah. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled right in our nation. Now, can you can you uh, can you just expound a little bit when you say persecution is coming? Yeah, it's coming. Listen, I'm in California right now, and we just uh, we've got a couple of lawsuits that we have filed against the the governor's office and the attorney general's office. Thank God, we just won one of those huge uh, lawsuits about eight weeks ago. Rick, uh, California decided made a, by fiat, by the way, unconstitutionally. Uh, Gavin Newsom and his legislature decided that churches would, from their payroll, from giving, from tithes and offerings, that they would have to give a portion of that money to the state of California to help fund elective abortions. And I said no to that. And I wound up finding a lawsuit against the governor. And uh, beautifully, wonderfully, we just won in the California Supreme Court that fight. That's a form of what I call white collar persecution. But now it's getting elevated. Uh, people are threatening. If I see you somewhere, I'm going to do you in. It, you better not, you better hope I don't meet you in some dark alley somewhere, Pastor. That kind of stuff. Christians are being uh, set up. But here's the thing you said something that I must respond to. It's so good. Daniel never did anything wrong that's recorded in the Bible yet. Daniel was taken away as a teenager from Israel by General Nebuchadnezzar at that time, carried, carried to Babylon. He never saw his homeland again, but that young man went on to be an old man, never compromised, stood firm with God, persecuted, and every time he was persecuted, he was elevated to the point where Daniel became the second mm. most powerful guy in the Babylonian Empire and was a counselor to various kings. Point being this, every time the church is persecuted, those who truly are the church wind up changing history. Think, I was recently speaking at Oxford yes. and I wound up uh, standing by the Martyrs Memorial where you're, you're standing there and, and men like Wycliffe uh, and others who stood for the word of God, were violently persecuted to death. And what happened? What happened from their blood grew a great revival that swept revival. through Europe. Exactly. So even though California is going so, so very dark, as is the United States, there are beautiful pockets of fire bursting open of revival. And one of it is in Southern California. Listen, you mentioned in the introduction 10,000 people. What you don't know is that we not too long ago baptized 3,000 people in the Pacific Ocean who made decisions for Christ. We are going to be holding a service on September 8th in an arena in Anaheim that seats 17,500 people. What does this mean? It wow. means people are looking around, they're scared, they're nervous. All this stuff about UFO sightings, all this stuff about violence, all this stuff about government, you know, encroachment upon your life. People are scared. They're looking for answers. There's only one answer. And I love it. It never changes. It's the word of God. It's the Bible. It's never failed us. And it's never going to fail us. And you can trust the Lord. He will see you all the way through. The United Nations has a 2030 agenda. The World Economic Forum has a great reset. The COVID-19 pandemic has an accelerated mandate. But as the new world order plans their world without God, nothing will be accelerated faster 
than the prophetic word God has spoken to the United States of America. It will be the hour that changes everything. Prophecy USA is proud to present their latest book, The Hour That Changes Everything. Together with our study guide and free app, prepare yourself for one of the greatest events in Bible prophecy. Go to prophecyusa.org or call the number on your screen now to make your donation of $35 or more and receive your copy of the book, The Hour That Changes Everything. We are waiting to hear from you. Call today. So that's the verse, come out of her, my people, be not partaker of her sins. That could be a verse saying, come out of the darkness, come to the light. I'll protect you before judgment yep. comes. So in Jeremiah, it, it, you, you mentioned Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, Jeremiah prophesied that historical Babylon would judge Israel for 70 years, but then God would judge Babylon. So do you think it's possible that persecution of believers in America could provoke God to judge America, but he won't judge us? He will not judge the remnant, but he'll judge those that are judging oh, us. Absolutely. No doubt about that. Listen, first of all, our sins were judged at the cross in Christ. There are personal judgments that God levies against a sinner. In our case, as believers, he levied that judgment upon Christ. That's why you need to come to Christ. The other form of judgment is national judgment. Yeah, national judgments deal with God, God recompensing the nations as a whole. And within those nations, God, like you mentioned Israel, God will preserve his people. It doesn't mean that we're all going to we're going to be loved and hugged by everybody. Jesus said you're going to be hated, but he's also able to keep yes. us. And I love Luke 21:36. Jesus said when you see all these things coming to pass and that begin to happen, look up, right? Because your redemption draws near. He says you'll escape these things that are coming. It literally uses the word escape. Luke 21, 36, while all this is coming upon the earth, we should always be ready to meet the Lord, even right now today, by putting our faith in him. We're not to put our faith in any nation. Look, I was born and raised in, in California, in the United States. But my faith, as much as I have studied George Washington, my faith is not in George Washington. Okay, my faith, my faith right. is in Christ. My true citizenship, I have a U.S. passport. But thank God, I have a passport for heaven. That's, that has been purchased for me by the blood of Christ, the Bible says. And my citizenship is in heaven. That's where I'm going. In the meantime, I'm going to take every opportunity to tell every single human being I can that Jesus Christ loves them, that we need to repent of our sins, follow him because he's Lord and Savior, and that he wants you to be in heaven with him. But you must accept that offer. He's not going to he's not going to bend your arm or put you in a headlock. You've got to willingly say, "Yes, Lord, I choose to follow you." And then from that moment on, my friend, I tell you what, for 46 years, almost 47 years I've been following Jesus, and I can't believe the life he has given me. It has been an incredible ride. Rick, I could die today at the age of 46 and rejoice in the fact that did I say 46? 64. 64. I could... 40. No, wait. You're 64. Okay. No, I'm 65. Boy, am I messed up. <laughs> 65 years old, I'm telling you right now, I could die today having lived a full life because Jesus has led me all along the way. To God be the glory. It's been an amazing, amazing life. Well, that's, that's what Jesus said. You know, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And that that's what, of course, I'm a graduate of Oral Roberts University. So, I mean, I was in, I was indoctrinated yes. with that. But uh, you give, we're, we're talking about judgment. Now, you talked about the nations and, and we're talking about persecution that's coming. So, in a sense, God used Nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. to judge his people. Yep. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not bow. They got thrown into the fire. God did not stoke the fire, but he did rob the flames That's of right. their violence. 
So we're here now, and it looks like we're heading into a position where the modern culture, I call it the Babylonian mm -hmm. culture, is coming against us. And for a, a certain period of time, we may have some judgment. But you give five verses supporting pre-tribulation rapture. And your final verse that you use is, God hath not pointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. What's the difference between God's judgment and God's wrath? Can, can you explain the wrath and, and his judgment? We're in a judgment yes. right now. Very we're in judgment no right now, America is. No doubt. And, and, I, and I don't think it's only Canada and America. I think even, you know, you look at some of the issues in Israel where God is allowing judgment to manifest. Great question, Rick. Listen, beautiful. Number one, judgment. God will always exercise judgment with hopes or with anticipation of us repenting. Ek homo legeo. The word metanoia is to repent. Ek homo logeo is to say the same word that God does about our sin. Uh, so you've got judgment where God is wanting, asking, pleading with you to turn around. When judgment has expired, for example, Mo, uh, Noah was 120 years in building the ark, it says, and that he was a preacher of righteousness. That's interesting, isn't it? But when no one would listen, when no one would listen, then wrath came. Here's the difference. Ra uh, judgment is to get people to turn around. Wrath is when God says, that's it. I turn you over. I'm done talking. End, end of chance. Wrath yes. is now falling. America is in the state of judgment. Our prayer is that America would repent and that voice has got to come from its spiritual leaders, not from the White House. It's got to come from God's house. Yes. If Christians repent yes. in America, then there's going to be hope for the nation. If Christians don't repent, right, then the nation's going to slip from judgment into wrath. We are the salt and light. We are the ones that can issue hope if we would just speak it, if we would just announce the truth of God. He wants us to announce that he is a God that's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. That's exactly. that's part of his judgment. Exactly. In his judgment, the scripture says, Lord, remember mercy. But you notice, you know this, Rick, that when the word of God says that God's wrath was being brought, there is no mercy in his wrath. His wrath is pure, it's just, it's perfect, it's holy. And it cannot be stopped. His wrath is unstoppable. Folks, I hope you enjoyed our interview with Pastor Jack Hibbs. Join us next week as we conclude our interview concerning this great nation that we call the United States of America. This is Prophecy USA. My name's Rick Pearson. And we're reminding you that God's in total control. Jesus Christ is alive and he's coming back much sooner than many people think. See you next week on Prophecy USA. Shalom. Thank you.